Welcome to the Hindu Live for Life 2019. Uh, this is day three, the final day, and uh, we're very pleased to have with us today Suki Kim, who is a South Korean American investigative journalist, uh, and she has written the most amazing account, uh, insider account of North Korea, that big black box, opaque state that we all wonder about, uh, and it's been called a rogue state by some. Uh, so, Suki, thank you for being here. Uh, and it was a great panel earlier today. Um, and could you tell us a little bit about what really motivated you to do that? I know you were from South Korea, but to you know jump onto this opportunity to go into the North, was there a specific motivation or a thought behind that? Because North Korea is a subject that we really don't know uh, much about. Uh, we might have some uh, ideas about nuclear tension and the hunger there, but to really empathize with such an immense suffering we need to put a human face on the tragedy. And the only way to do that was to be immersed in that world and to really uh, deliver with a vividness uh, what is happening to people inside. Right, so your account actually does that. I think like we said today, it was, uh, you know, it brings together journalistic rigor with a very deeply humane and personal account for you because, you know, your family went through a lot in terms of that separation, the war, and so forth. Um, what is it, after that experience, has it left you feeling different about the North or about the conflict? I believe that, uh, you know, true investigative journalism that is also a narrative takes a really long-term dedication to the subject. So because I follow the subject for over a decade, and approached it from every single angle that I could possibly get access to and also lived within. I think the more and more I learned about North Korea and understood as much as I can about the topic, I think the subject became actually more urgent mm. in its desperation. So I think when you know about something more, mm. the more you begin to worry. Right, right. But I mean, while you were through this decade that you were planning or thinking through these things, the North was up to all kinds of things, you know. So like you said earlier today, they would this game of cat and mouse, they would uh, come to the negotiating table, but then fire missiles, and then sanctions, and then no sanctions. Do you feel that the, it's because it was also the North is playing a game with the rest of the world in, in the political sense, that you were doing something, uh, you know, to kind of shed light on the situation? You know, I believe as a writer and also investigative journalist that not all subjects are equal. Mm. Some are just more varied under a lot of lies and those mm. subjects do need investigation. Yeah. So I think that the cat and mouse game or the political maneuvers that North Korea is constantly doing, in a way it um, compels you to look deeper every time because you can't really take it for what it is. Yeah. You know, there are layers and layers and layers. And often when there are so many layers, it's because what's beneath that is rotten. Mm -hmm. And it's your job for a writer to uncover that okay. so that truth can come out. Right. So what were those, I mean, you do uncover this in your book a lot, but what were those lies and I guess you, you really, in a way, gave us a picture of the North Korean people and their daily lives, university student lives specifically. Um, what were the lies and what is it that's keeping this what, highly unusual uh, state together in isolation despite so many years passing? I think it's really a dictatorship at its worst. Mm -hmm. When you think about it, it's just an unbelievable amount of control. You know, you cannot control a human being just by physical strength. You can control them through cult ideology. You can control them through um, taking away any access to information. Right. You can control them by denying them of education, forced separation, for example, by sending all the young men to the army for 10 years. So you keep families apart. Right. So you realize when you are um, looking at North Korea, layer by layer by layer, so many levels of control. And right. this is why, in many sense, it's maintained. Then, on top, topping that with realizing the outside forces, right. meaning foreign policy that is surrounding foreign um, politi geopolitical nature of the countries that surround the 
region, yeah. we're talking about the United States, China, Russia, South Korea, Japan, right. and how complicit those governments are in enabling North Korea. Okay, well, thank you. I mean, this is a fascinating picture which we don't get anywhere else, so thank you for coming all this way and sharing it with us.